brought my prop. My poem is My Mother and St. Christopher, and it's on page 105 if you'd like to follow. <laughs> she flew away from France the first time before anyone knew about the Beatles. Pressing her St. Christopher against her plaid shirt dress, gin on her breath, my mother listened to the props slicing through foggy air, thick like tongues. On one side of the gold-faced, Christ and Christopher, his arms encircled the infant halo-bound, they both crossed the river. A flip of the talisman reveals two Ferraris blazing under Mont Agel as a sailboat plays in the port of Hercules. Christ is in the front car, backed by Christopher, who relies on his wake and instinct on the steep Monaco curves. <laughs> this medal, my inheritance, cool next to my pale child's skin on the Boeing 747 to Paris. My French grandmother kissed me with it on my fourth birthday. I must keep this necklace secured in a leather box under my twin bed with my other nice jewelry. But now the chain is tucked into my sailor striped top, not to get snagged or stolen. I rely on my mother to navigate customs. She fills the air with d'accord, merci, and s'il vous plaît, polite words, to match her burnt orange skirted suit she bought expressly for this trip. She never sleeps. Maybe St. Christopher staves away delays and cancellations, crashes, hijackings, and water landings. But not her mother and her sister, she'll soon see. I feel her blackness, but I can't patch her love and her loathing, like the silver squares on the TWA's wing, or help her cross her bottomless river. I never hold her hand. And I will read Allison Elrod, Honorable Mention, on page 8. Because I like the name Eve. And since we're doing some religious talismans, I <laughs> will go with the theme. First fig. The fig tree has spread its generous canopy across my late summer side yard. Its branches are heavy with fruit. Every day now, the figs grow softer and fuller. They are taking the rain and the warmth of a hundred summer days and making them over into pleasure, taut green skin and soft pink flesh. Wearing only my nightgown and work boots, I have come outside at dawn like some postmodern Eve, yearning for a taste of the fruit of the tree. I reach up into the branches, reach up for my fruit that hangs just beyond my reach, the fig whose skin is just beginning to bear the flush of readiness. Maybe I am Eve. After all, isn't the light in my garden still what came of let there be light? And isn't everything to come in human history beginning on this very day, this very morning, when this very fig, the one I am holding in my hand, is finally ripe? Or maybe I am a middle-aged woman outside of my nightgown at 6 a.m., filled with happiness, so pure it feels like innocence, savoring the sweetness of summer's first ripe fig before the light shifts, before history resumes, before I come inside to wake you. Temptation on my mind. Thank you. And I'll conclude with this poem that I wrote about my daughter Erin, and she is uh, 19 months. And uh, Daniel, you're, you make a little cameo in this poem. Okay. <laughs> so you gotta listen for it. Erin dreams. She escapes from shopping carts, retrieves blue crocs, cereal encrusted plates when asked, sorts staples, pinching each silver tray out of the box and back in again. She snatches her brother's favorite penguin, pulls his hair when he blocks her path, and gently lifts my cell phone from my bag before I can catch her dialing an outside area code. <laughs> like a trumpet to her lips, she buzzes the speech milestones the doctors expect her to say at 18 months. Ball, bee, bow, button, bottle, blanket, baby, blue, bat. 
Last night, I dream she's an actress taking bit roles on HBO or maybe even Broadway. Now, Erin Renee, she's dropped her Jewish last name. Why does she want to be someone else? In high school, she dyed her red hair pink, multi-pierced her ears, her soft curls conceal so many puffy punctures, her nails painted black, and safety pins ribbed like shark's teeth in all of her jackets. <laughs> but for now, she is the ball I throw to her, bouncing, hiding under cabinets. I know I can't control her, though she thinks I do. I'll have faith she'll come back. Cling to me like she did when she was hours old.